Local news that matters on Local 22 News. At this place in history, we're in Panton, and I guess we should have brought some waiters to get to the marker, but that's okay. That's what this guy is here for, Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. What are we doing here? So we are on Arnold Bay in Panton, Vermont, named after Benedict Arnold. Mm, okay. Famous, yeah. infamous guy, and the marker, the water's a little high, <laughs> but the marker back there talks about what was important about this site. Okay. I think everyone gets so wrapped up in what happened with him selling out West Point to the British or getting caught doing that, that they forget that early in the war that he really had a great impact, especially in this area. So he went with Ethan Allen um, to Fort Ticonderoga and took part in the capture of Fort Ticonderoga and later Crown Point. Um, and then he was in charge of making sure that this kind of northern area stayed, let's call it British, British free. That was in 1775. In 1776, the Continental Army decided they were going to go and they're going to attack Quebec. They took Montreal, but then they failed to take Quebec City. So it was a, a loss. The British now having raised this siege in yeah. Canada decided they're going to come down the lake and they're going to use Lake Champlain and the Hudson River Valley to go to New York City. They have an army in New York. They have an army in Canada. If those two can meet in Albany, it's going to cut New England off from the rest of the colonies. They called it cutting the head off of the snake. So Benedict Arnold was charged with creating a navy on this lake to stop the British from coming down, or at least slow them down. And he did that. He built it in uh, Skeensboro, which is now Whitehall. And, um, you know, he had some small sloops and a number of what they called gondolas, which are basically large gunboats. And he brought them up and they met the British at Valcour Island. A battle happened there. The Americans were outgunned, but they, they fought the British for a day, October 11th, 1776. And then in the night, they slipped away because they knew they couldn't win this battle. So then you had this running gun battle down Lake Champlain. I just imagine, you know, these ships firing at each other, coming down Crazy. Lake Champlain. Benedict Arnold was trying desperately to get to the safety of Crown Point, but the wind ended up coming up from the south, slowing him down. The mm -hmm. British start catching up with him, and they caught up with him right around here. They had a pretty intense gun battle, and then he took his remaining uh, ships or boats into this bay over here and brought the ships up, kind of right up onto the shore where that little house is over there, um, where the Ferris farm was, beached the boats, left the flags flying and burned them wow. so that the British couldn't get the boats. Yeah. And then escaped to overland that. to get back to uh, Crown Point and later Ticonderoga. But what did it do? It stopped the British from coming down the lake that year. Hmm. So it was too late in the season. People generally didn't fight in the winter, so they went back to Canada, and it gave um, the new United States another year to prepare. And the following year, 1777, we defeated the British, first at the Battle of Bennington, and then again at Saratoga, um, which ended that threat to the north, and it brought the French into the war and ultimately allowing us to, to win. From the day that those ships burned here in this bay, it became a, a tourist site or a pilgrimage site, and folks would take pieces of the boats away with them. And so this is a piece of Benedict Arnold's uh, flagship, the no Congress, way. and uh, it was placed in the care of the Historical Society in, in 1960. So I, I went digging through the archives, and, and there it is, a piece of one of the ships that was burned here at Arnold Bay. That's amazing. Wow, and so people come here to try and visualize all of this. There's, there's usually a beach, right? Yes, there are a couple of markers here, there's too. There's usually a beach. So there's an old marker here, and we spent some time finding it this morning, and sure enough, it's partly underwater. We needed a snorkel we, to, get to, to, to get to it. <laughs> um, but there's also another interpretive panel, and it's a, pub, it's a public boat launch for the town of Panton, so you can come visit and just kind of imagine what happened here in 1776. At this place in history. You're watching Local 22 News this morning. Local news that matters to Northern New York, Vermont, and New Hampshire.